I have something exciting lined up with a couple of sticks out there. And I'm trying to visualize how it'll work. How that'll go. Huh. It's pretty cool. Ah, so before I start walking, I should warn you, and you're going to see a bit of it because I'm going to go on frame, that I, uh, I managed to be stupid yesterday and bugger my knee. I just grabbed the digging shovel in case we end up needing it while we're over there. And, um, I, it, it's my own dumb fault and I think I'm going to be fine. I jumped over a bench at work. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. So, oh, I just noticed that there's a third one confusing things. I don't remember what this third one's marking. So we have a stick here, one here, and one just further down a little bit, which I think you can still see. That's, and these are a plant that I'm pretty excited about and that we had a local giveaway for. I have tried five times to plant pawpaw. And I've never succeeded. They're actually pretty difficult to get going. So, here's one of the sticks. Oh, the stick behind you is marking a uh, shad bush or service berry that's popping up out of the sidewalk. So that's something else to maybe transplant. I guess we'll see. <sighs> so, look at this. Aren't they cute? These are from Tree Pittsburgh. And I have discovered that these need deer protection. At least in my yard they do. And they get maybe 15, 20 tops, feet tall. In our climate, they don't usually get up to their max height. Uh, they're they're all, they're the hardiest custard apple family plant, and that means that they're hardy here in Zone Five and even farther north. But they get a little stunted by the cold, you know, like they don't get their full height here. So from the porch, this does look like it will probably close this privacy gap. Oddly enough, the deer or something have been eating the leaves off of my native hazelnuts back here, too. So I'm going to make little cages for these pawpaw. I think you can see back in here, we got one that's going to actually be inside the corner of the fence itself. So that won't need its extra, an extra cage. And then we got one back here. But I'm actually going to let the elderberry grow around it, and it's going to be popping up out of the middle of an elderberry. Which is super exciting, and then that actually is a potted comfrey in the back. I think I'm actually going to point it this way, and then train it upright. But the sun hits it from this direction, maybe this way. Uh, yeah, so that it can correct itself. Now, since these are small, shade-loving trees, I think they'll be quite happy here. I think so. You see this? Isn't that weird? That's one of the true natives of the hazelnut. This one is too, but it's not nearly as... Whoops! I have my tripod set on a loose setting so that I can gimbal it, but uh, it's sometimes slides. And here's that, uh, here we'll just go like this. That's one of the Saskatoons that's seated. So, sorry if I just swung you all around. I, I apologize for that. So I brought my digging fork back and I think I'm going to go ahead and put that one at the corner in. This is a nice damp position. They like shade until they're older. Uh, they're very, very touchy. They typically have a taproot. See me limping? Isn't that sad? I'll be alright. And, uh, these ones 
are pretty healthy. Isn't that exciting? So I'm really hoping that this air pruning, although I do see that the taproot got cut, um, I'm really hoping that the air pruning and everything it'll take. I'm glad they're small. Closer. Let me show you the strawberry. Did I bury it? Oh, I think I just buried it. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I said to show you. Here's one right here. I don't know where these came from. And then there was a fruit, and I think I just buried it. What a fool I am. Here we go. Yeah, I did. Look at that. Isn't that neat? So I'm making this hole see if I can point it at it. Here we go. And it's got to be a little deeper. This is nice. Good soil for it. You can see the fungal life from the wood chips. And I think I'll end up bringing back quite a bit more wood chips later. Try not to bury that strawberry again. It's so exciting. They're like, oh, that's so neat. I didn't plant that strawberry. It's just there. So it, it might just be a wild strawberry. I mean, obviously it's a wild strawberry. Let's see. This is a good time of year to be planting. I think my Edible Acres order will come soon, too. I've never caught them, like, while they still had stocks, so I can, I can tell you I'm super excited about that. There we go. Okay. That should do it. I'm just gonna push from the bottom of this air pruning pot and pull from the top. Nice, loose. Whew. There's your root ball. There's the soil it's been growing in, so we're gonna keep that. We're gonna try and get it into the soil level that um, it was at before, which is where it's damp, because uh, that soil didn't stay with it, which is fine. Enough of it did. And I'm going to have to mulch like crazy back here. So I actually think that the rest of its leveling of the soil is going to be uh, with wood chips. That's what I think. So, yeah. I'll put a little, um, I'll put the stick back and maybe I'll use its little name tag to anchor it so that it's not too floppy. Come on, name tag.
There we go. I just used the name tag and attached it to the stick. So the only thing left to do is mulch the rest of the way and um, put a cage around it and plant the other one. All right, I have Papa. I really hope these ones live. And I also have some random wild strawberry growing back here that's actually gonna fruit, it looks like. Awesome. All right. It is currently October 17th, I think. And, oh, by the way, Thursday was my house anniversary. I've been here 17 years. Crazy, right? All right, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.